Hello everyone, I'm Catherine Desinas Applin and welcome to Catherine Reads Midnight Sun in Dutch, Chapter 4, Visionen, vis, 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 yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it, why do I bother? Now before we start the video, you might have remembered last week that I was trumped by this onder vier ogen which I thought meant privacy, and I was right. I just didn't understand why it was under four eyes. And then it struck me, four eyes, because your two eyes plus the two eyes of the other person. But I didn't think that because it's under. And when I asked Prince Charming about it, he said, under because the words are under your eyes, which I think he made up. But I love the expression now. I will always use that expression. And I just, I wanted to update you guys. I had, such a love and hate relationship with this chapter. I was so happy because it was easy to read and it just, it flew by. I couldn't believe how quickly I got through the chapter. And then all that went away once I counted the pages and realized that it was only 14. But on the bright side, I got the chapter done. Dutch is coming, it's coming. I'm understanding so much more and I'm feeling so much better about it. Only thing I really didn't understand was this one passage. I'm gonna butcher some Dutch and read it to you out loud. Ik rend naar het oosten, over en door Bergen, recto, rectan, tot ik aan de andere kant van de zee aan. En waar zich glimp overwing van de lichten van Seattle. Now I get in this passage that they're describing that Edward is running around places. I get that. But I don't understand what the heck is a sea arm because I looked it up. It translates to sea and arm. And I didn't need a translator for that. I just don't know what the heck a sea arm is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be coast, but that's, that's an odd expression, sea arm. One of my favorite parts of the book, which I should say that this chapter focuses on the aftermath of what happened after Edward saved Bella from being squished. He goes back to school and then he's dealing with his family and Alice has a vision. And the best part is when Rosalie starts throwing insults at Edward. And they got really excited because I don't know insults in Dutch. I also don't know the swear words because my life is sad and boring, but that's neither here nor there. I was really excited about these insults, but they're really sad. <laughs> Just, yeah, I won't be able to use them for my enemies because they, they, my enemies would win because they would just be able to make fun of me. But there's one word. I love this word. Seckle. And I like it because I thought it meant something horrible because doesn't it just sound like, eh, seckle. Probably mispronouncing it too, but that's okay. And it turns out this word means softy, which is not... The, the, the translation that I would have thought of. No. So, my favorite word turned out to be a dud and I didn't learn any insults, so. And another sad thing about this whole chapter is that there's this part where it's describing Edward running in the rain. And there was a huge miss on the translator's part for not choosing one of the bajillion words that exist in Dutch to describe rain. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm offended that there wasn't one of these wacky words. It, just, it was a missed opportunity. Now, let's rant about verbs. All languages have them. Verbs in Dutch, though, just... The Belgians, or the Dutch, um, we'll add prefixes to the words, and sometimes the prefixes also can be prepositions. And what happens with these prefix verbs is that they can be compound or they can be hyphenated. And that hyphen changes the whole meaning of the verb. But what's also fun is that you have the prefix verbs that can not actually be a prefix, but can just be a preposition that goes with the verb. Sometimes when you're reading, you see a preposition and you're not sure, is this a preposition or is this a prefix verb? Some really good examples that I wrote down for y'all is you have the verb tellen, which means to count. And then you can add the prefix ver for vertellen, which means to tell. Then you have the verb 
Kennen, which is to know, Bekennen, which is to confess, and Be is, is a prefix, but it's not always a prefix because you have Behinnen, which is to begin, and the B there is not a prefix because it wouldn't be fun if they did it that way. And then you have Overkommen, which is a compound prefix and then a hyphenated prefix. And the difference between the two is how you pronounce them. And since I don't know where the inflection supposed to be, whether it's compound or hyphenated, it, just, it's so complicated. And then the best part is the prefix preposition verbs. For example, uplopen. So uplopen can mean to increase. So for example, you can say ik loop op de trap. And if you're, you're not good at Dutch, you might read that as I increase the stairs, which, you know, really doesn't make sense. But because you suck at Dutch, you might just assume that you're, you're translating it in a wrong way. Or maybe they use a different verb to express something differently than you would in English. When in fact, it's not to increase. It's just a verb with up as the preposition and what the sentence actually mean is I ran up the stairs and oh, I really noticed that in this chapter and all I can say is I hate verbs in Dutch. People ask all the time if I think Dutch or French is harder or easier. They're both evil, they're just evil in different ways. See French is evil because you have all these conjugation things that you have to do and there's agreements and it's just why. English works perfectly fine without this crap. Just throw it away. Likewise, in Dutch, with these compound, prefix, preposition, verbs, it's so complicated. English works perfectly fine without all these extra prepositions. You could just throw them out. I mean, I guess the only good part about that is that I am working on this story and I've decided that one of the peoples are going to speak a language that doesn't have preposition or conjugation and I'm getting rid of just all the dumb things in languages that frankly you don't need. Anywho, that's what I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. The mighty algorithm gods, blessed be, don't care as long as you interact with this video. Be sure to check out the description below for all the links to my social media. Leave a comment and say hello and I'll see you guys in the next video. Tot scenes, may apple scenes. Ik ging terug naar school. Dat was het verstandig gist en zo het minste achwen wekken. Aan het een van de ochten zaten bijna alle andere leerlingen ook weer in de les. Alleen Tyler, Bella en een paar anderen.